Hey, this is Dave, and this is part two of my workbench series. Today we're going to go over dust collection and powering the bench. Now, if there's anything I've learned about dust collection systems, as they always work on paper. I'm going to show you what I planned, and then I'm going to show you what I ended up with, which is completely different. So if you haven't caught the first video in this series, please look in the links below and take a look at that. And let's get this thing turned around, and I'll show you the dust collection system. Let's start with power first. I think you got to understand the power system before you can understand with dust collection. Let's get to it. Okay, a quick run through of the power on the workbench. You can see here, this is the RV uh, plug that the power comes into. Curves around here to this junction box. And from this junction box, you can see a leg right here in the white Romex comes right over here to the plug. On the left side, it's just simple power. Plug in, you get power, right? Okay, back to the power inlet junction box. Drop down to this plug. And I put this plug in place solely to put in the eye socket uh, auto switch. So this senses the vacuum cleaner. You put in the shot back here. Uh, once it senses current on this plug, it'll turn it on. You got two of those a switch auto off and then bypass which turns on the vac. So I have power right here. So this is where you would plug in your power tool or your saw or whatever you, whatever you want. But I'm plugging in a junction box. So this is a sense down here. Anything on this power will turn on the accessory, the shop vac. So like I have it labeled here, power with vac. So this leg comes over and goes over to the right side of the plug that's on the outside of the bench. So any hand tools that you want to use power with will be, uh, will turn on the vacuum right there. Okay, out of this junction box, I go to another junction box because I had way too many circuits in here and I felt very uncomfortable with splicing those up. And I think it's probably against some kind of rule to do, I think there were four in here. Um, not that any of this is up to code, but just saying. So I go over to a new junction box, and this is kind of what I had on hand, which was this outdoor plastic box. So I used it. It's, it's been working fine. So here I run power up to the table saw and router box, which that is the plug right here. And then you can see the table saw on the other side. Everything plugs in over here. This goes to the miter saw, the, the compound miter saw, which comes up here and goes right here to this plug. So all of this, of course, is on the sensing circuit. If we're backtracking, all the saws are on the sensing circuit up to here. Now over here, I also plug in the planer and any offboard tools that I need power to. So. That explains the power wall, and I think that we needed to do that in order to understand uh, dust collection for this workbench. Now moving on to the first iteration of dust collection, I went with the dust stopper. This was available, it, it is available at Home Depot, and I've got this little Stingray vacuum, and Rigid sells a set of adapters for $8, and that's what I'm pointing at right there. This little Stingray vacuum exhaust goes out the side and I'm going to try to uh, I do have an exhaust port at the bottom of the bench and I'm only hooked up to the table saw and I do three test cuts and test to see how much dust this little guy can can get because I have it available it's like 15 years old but I have it and look it does great it doesn't get gunked up at all and I've kind of got the old filter rigged up it's this thing is so old, but Home Depot still sells them. So now if we get the dust stopper taken apart, you can see that it picked up all the dust out of three cuts. Now, that's not an impressive amount of dust, but I just cut a 2 by 4 a couple of times. So it works. Dust stopper works good. The, the little vacuum cleaner works good. I have no expectations of it handling the system that I have designed for it, but I wanted to test it anyway. It's at this point where I need to show you this lovely block diagram. And if you didn't understand anything in the power or you have questions about that, you can pause and take a look at that. But we're going to be talking about the diagram in blue. You can see the shop back and then you can see the dust stopper labeled DD for some reason. And then the two and a half inch hose or tubing or whatever going up to every 
saw. Now the planer is pretty easy. It goes off of the bench through a blast gate and uh, plug into the planer. It works very well. Then table saw router and miter. Each one of these stations I planned on having two dust port kind of connections. That's why you see a Y at each one. So the table saw I wanted to have a small hose going up to the fence guard or the or the blade guard and then one going to the back of the saw. The router I planned on having uh, an ambient uh, dust collection port in the box and then one at the fence of the router table. And then the miter box saw one going to the back of the uh, dust collection system on the miter box and then one as uh, kind of a box that would go around or behind the miter box that would pick up uh, the ambient dust that flew around. So that was what I had planned. Now that was a lot of Y connections and a lot of tubing. Of course the little vacuum cleaner was not going to do it, but I did find a $74, $75 vacuum at Home Depot and I'll show you that next. I got the vacuum system fully installed. Got the dust stopper, vacuum, tees off, comes up here to the miter box to this blast gate. So that was here. Then it goes on, tees again, and goes over to here. But up here, it goes over to the side blast gate for sanding tools and vacuuming. So this T is blocked off with gaffer's tape, and this T comes over to the table saw. So now you can see everything shoved into this little bitty space, 14 inches, wall to wall, a dust stopper, and there's a brand new rigid vac back there. Everything's hooked up. Everything's like the diagram as you see it here. Now you can see it really, really tight, but it works. And what I'm trying to do is just save as much space as possible for this ledge here for tool storage and or more drawers and space. So there's where you plug it in and left is power and the right is power and dust and that's the off board that goes to the planer and all of the hand tools. One thing I failed to do is how am I going to turn the vacuum on and just clean up around? Well, if you have this available to you at the wall, you can just click it down into the on position and run the vacuum. Well, what I need to do is put a switch right around here and turn the light, let me maybe turn a light on and then so that'll sense and have the vacuum turn on. I just, I was being real stingy with the space and um, I, fr I failed to recognize that I need to turn the light on, open the blast gate and vacuum around the workbench. So that was gonna be like a revision six or seven. What you don't see here is a mess of tubing under the table saw where I was trying to divide it up and provide suction for the guard and the, the table itself. And I was just over over taxing the system. I had too many turns, too much tubes, and uh, it just wasn't efficient. No matter what vacuum I put it on, it would just wasn't efficient. It was just too much. So I got rid of what was the brand new rigid uh, shop vac and then went to an off uh, bench vacuum system and but first I got rid of the miter saw so you take a look at my di diagram rev 2 I took off the miter saw because nothing can overcome or nothing that I was doing can overcome what this miter saw spits out even with the bag on it around the blade is all kinds of it just throws dust everywhere in all directions so what I end up doing is putting that piece of that big shroud there and connect it to the planer hose and then put that behind the saw and then hope to suck up something. So I keep removing things trying to make this thing efficient so I removed the router table Y because I was simply using the planer hose and making an adapter and plugging that into the fence of the router table. The router box itself didn't create any dust and the fence extraction actually worked really well so there was no need having that extra Y. So Rev4 again trying to improve the system took out all that extra hose and just plugged into the back of the table saw. This is honestly the design I probably should have had from the beginning is um, it's almost like moving the vacuum hose to each tool but I, I do it by blast gates. 
And then finally I took everything out and then redid it. And I have a planer hose and a table saw hose and that's it. So all of that planning and work has reduced my system now to this. This is on the wall. Power the bench. So that'll sense current and turn the vacuum on. Just got a light here. I'm using the side, which used to be going to the planer, right in hand tools as inlet. So that is vacuum here. Now, now here is the status of underneath the workbench. You've got the dust stopper, which that's vacuum in right here, collects the chips and the dust. The vacuum goes out and you can see this one here goes to the table saw back in there. And this one goes to pretty much everything else that I want to do. Miter box, planer, hand tools. So all of that work has reduced it down to that. Uh, the power wall is still the same, but yeah, pretty much, pretty much a fail. So all of this is pretty much on me. I'm not blaming any of this gear for that. And I am going to retry the smaller vacuum inside the bench without all the tubing and the Ys and, the, and all the runs. I'm going to retry that and see how it does and see if I can rebuild this thing. Otherwise, I really need to take a look at some off-board wall-mounted systems. I would like to be able to mount something up in this area. I've got this air hose option that I never use. I Look, I'm hanging other hoses on it. It needs to go on the ceiling and be able to pull down and grab air when I need it. So I was thinking maybe a dust collection system, a real dust collection system, could go up here somewhere and I could just put the four inch hose, plug the four inch hose into the workbench and then route maybe two and a half inside. I know that's already a faux pas. You're not supposed to do that, but that's what I'm thinking. Let me know in the comments what, what you're thinking and how we can, uh, I can help this situation out. Now, in order to film this video, I had to take out everything in the dust collection system. It is bare bones right now, but that is a great thing because I've had so many ideas about how to restart this process and kind of retest it make it more efficient, and I think that's going to be yet another video. So let me know what you think about the dust collection efforts. Give me some of your pain points, some things that you've learned, and should I be shopping for something a little bit more elaborate that, you know, some wall mount units. Let me know what you think about those systems, and should I just be going with something like that instead of trying to get everything shoved underneath the workbench. Maybe I could just use it for storage instead. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for hanging around and we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I get this thing fixed.